Today we're going to look at the product life cycle. If you've done IT CSE business before, this will be like a refresher. If you're doing IB business and doing this for the first time, it's kind of intuitive. It's quite easy to look at the tool and say, hey, most products go through the same life cycle. Uh, on the vertical axis, we have sales volume. Sometimes it might be termed sales in terms of dollars. Then we have time on the horizontal axis. Uh, I have included development on this. Many of the textbooks don't say to start straight away with introduction. The development stage is where companies, consumer group companies, are developing new products, but they never actually get to market. Only a small percentage of those products which are being developed get to market and become introduced. And then the product goes into the growth stage, and then it goes into maturity, and then it goes into decline. Uh, we also have in the forest go into the kind extension strategies which are introduced. One of the difficulties of using the product life cycle, if we take Coca Cola as our example, is that uh, in North America, for example, Coca Cola is probably sales are probably falling, so we say it's in decline. In North Korea, I assume it's exceptionally difficult to get Coca Cola, and North Korea so it may well not have been introduced. In many developing countries, Coca-Cola is probably in the growth or reaching maturity stage. So you want to make sure you're staying away from making general assumptions by saying, for example, Coca-Cola is in the decline stage. That is probably not true. It may be in the decline stage in certain markets, but it's not in the decline stage in all markets. Okay. Also, things like movies. A movie comes out and on its first weekend, that's the weekend when its sales are going to be highest. This weekend just passed, this is 2017, Wonder Woman did $100 million in America in its first weekend. Second weekend, it's likely to do $40 or $50 million. So for a movie, quite often, the introduction is when the sales are highest and then the sales very, very quickly go down. The extension strategy is obviously for movies. The simplest one to think of is Wonder Woman 2, 3, 4, 5. Also, a lot of uh, products come out and their product life cycle is going to be maybe three days long. No one buys the product, the company stops selling the product. Coca-Cola, as we mentioned, their life cycle is approaching 100 years. For technological products, the product's life cycle may be three months or six months or 12 months. So the product life cycle varies from product to product. Now, what we're going to do is look at the recorded music industry. Because again, we can, instead of making a Trying to make a general assumption of where is the recorded music industry, I'm going to try and apply the various ways in which people consume music uh, to the product life cycle. So the first thing we will look at is vinyl. Now, this is vinyl. I'm going to show you what vinyl is. This is my favorite band, Death Leopard. They're wonderful. This is the album they released in 2015. It's called Death Leopard. Uh, they released the album in mini formats, but this is the format called vinyl. So what does that mean? It comes in a big black like plastic filled disc and you put, put this on the turntable, the turntable goes round and you put the needle onto the song and then music wonderfully appears out of speakers. Um, this cost me about 30 or 40 dollars, okay, which is relatively expensive. Um, once upon a time, vinyl was the most, it was the highest selling sort of uh, format of music in the 1960s, 70s, and into the early 1980s. Uh, most music was consumed by buying vinyl. Okay, then it died because uh, people started buying CDs, and then obviously digital music came along. But then, uh, a few years ago, uh, people started buying more vinyl again. Young people started buying vinyl. In 2016, the 21 titled Blurry Face album was the biggest selling vinyl album in North America. It sold nearly 50,000 copies. The album in 2016, I think, sold about 1 million copies in North America. So 50,000 as a percentage of that is only 5%. But nevertheless, the vinyl market has been increasing in size. So uh, it has increased in size in 2006 from 3.1 million units to in uh, 2015, 
to 31.5 million units, and then it increased by another 26% in 2016. So, for a new person to buy vinyl, a 17 year old, they, for them, this is a brand new sort of product. So, arguably on the product life cycle, we could say that's at the growth stage. People who are in their 40s or 50s may disagree, but for a young person who's 17, 18, they may think it's in the growth stage. Then we move on to cassettes. People could buy vinyl or they could buy cassettes when I was growing up. Uh, as you can see, cassettes are relatively small. You put it into the tape machine, you press play. You hope that the tape doesn't get uh, all uh, sort of crumpled up, or caught up in the tape machine, and then it stops. And if you take the tape out, you've got to try and put the tape back in. If you do that, obviously, then it, uh, when you play it again, it gets a bit of sort of bad sound. Uh, sales of cassettes basically stopped at about the same time as sales of vinyl. Again, people started buying CDs, but recently sales have started to increase again. Young people want something which is tangible. So in 2016, sales of cassettes in the United States were about 130,000. The previous year, the sales had been about 75,000. So they've increased the sales by 74%. 130,000 uh, sales is that much. It's only about 1.5 to 2 million dollars. Okay, but nevertheless, that would probably mean that cassettes are for young people uh, in the introduction moving into road stage. Then we move on to digital and CDs. I haven't got a CD, you should know what a CD is. This has to do with the United Kingdom. So you can see here in red, sales of uh, CDs have been going down. You can see for digital, that's shown in black. Again, you can see quite clearly sales of digital has been going down. So it's very easy to say decline stage. That's partly because streaming has become more popular. This uh, streaming, first streaming figures appeared in 2010. This is going through to 2020, so it's a forecast. So uh, this is saying that by 2020, there will be something like 221 million people streaming worldwide. In 2017, that's about 146.6 million. Uh, and obviously, people can uh, subscribe, then you don't get any uh, advertisements. Or you can uh, have advertisements um, and you get it free. Now, the market leader is Spotify, who has like a market share of about 65%. Um, now, the artists only get paid for each song which is streamed they get paid 0.4 cents. That means if one million song, if your song is streamed one million times, you get $4,370. Okay? It can be a little wonder that for someone like 21 Pilots or my beloved Def Leppard, they would rather have someone spend $30 or $40 on a final. Okay? But nevertheless, you can see here on the product life cycle that the uh, streaming is quick be increasing in size, probably by the time we get to 2020, it will be hitting maturity. Okay, um, and beyond 2020, you probably shouldn't forecast beyond 2020 because the forecast is more likely to be wrong. But maybe by 2025, or maybe something else will come along and replace it, and maybe by then it will start going into decline. Now, if we take recorded music as a whole, you can see that here would look like it's in decline. But in 2016, for the first time for many years, recorded music actually started going back up again. So in reality, what happens for a lot of uh, companies is the product life cycle probably looks a little bit like that. Okay, um, and probably what will happen is if the forecasts to do with music streaming are correct, probably what will happen is the part of the amount of money spent on recorded music will continue to increase. Okay? Um, so please use the product life cycle, but be careful how you use it. Try and use it in the following way. Alright? So if we're taking cassettes, I would say cassettes are about here, the introduction to growth stage. Alright? Vinyl, growth. Alright? Streaming, growth. By 2020, it might be here. 
digital, I could hear it, and the client and TD, I have food here. Reason for that is I think maybe shops, or uh, those shops would still stock CDs, are likely to stop stocking them. However, obviously, uh, for digital music, you can just go onto iTunes and pay a dollar and download a song. Uh, whereas the physical shops, which have physical CDs, they're likely to keep making this section in the store which sells CDs smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Until maybe at some point they stop selling CDs. Whereas I think in the long run, in 15 years, you're still quite able to buy individual songs. Okay, so that's all on Product Lifecycle.